Welcome to episode 29 of Training Path and Truth. Episode 29 of Train Taught and Troops. Um, I'm, my guest here is Paul Ward, who's a fitness instructor from Carlo and runs Paulie's Boot Camp. I think um, you're probably well known throughout the country at this stage, Paul. <laughs> well, definitely within Carlo, because anyone I, I've spoken to the last, I'm only kind of new to the fitness game the last year or two, and anyone, everyone has been, yeah, check, do you know Polly? Like, you know, I, you know, I said, uh, I may tune into this guy, you know, and so. I think everyone was kind of pointing me towards your direction. Get him on. He'd be great to get on. Mm-hmm. So you're here anyway here today. We are. Ready to rock. <laughs> yeah. So, Paul, first of all, I'll run through what, what this podcast is kind of about. It's train, thought, and truth. And the reason why I call it that is um, it's kind of the training is the physical, the thought is like the mental, and the truth is like the spiritual kind of strengths. And uh, what I do is I get guests on and they talk about, you know, we, we go through each heading based on their lives and I think some people you know that are listening take you know um, might relate to different guests in, in different areas so I know you're first of all like we, we get into the, the training side of things so, mm-hmm. so the physical health and I know obviously this is somewhere you shine as well uh, out in the forefront um, so but before I go into it maybe uh, it's just a little bit of a background uh, for you for people who don't because a lot of people listen that are in different countries mm-hmm. America and Australia are a big fan Canada so um Maybe just your background. Yeah, cool. Okay, well, I'm 42 years old. I born in Dublin in the 23rd of June, 1978. Birthday is only a couple of weeks away. Oh, I'll remind you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I did my leaving cert then and went on to college to train um, as a chef. And I moved down here. I met my wife in 99. And we went off to Australia for a year. And that was brilliant. Backpacking for a year. Oh, and yeah. then we came back then and we bought a house down in Carlo in 2003 and continued then working as a chef and 2011 then i got my black belt in crab maga and i opened up the club on the 8th of august 2011 2011 well, yeah why carlo uh, well sonia my wife is from carlo oh, right, okay. so um it just seemed you know and as i was training for my black belt um months beforehand i just kind of started looking around okay i need a place to train from i need a place to work from and start buying gear and kind of planning ahead yeah um and oh, the 8th of august i got my black belt in july and opened up here then two weeks after and were you always someone who was very like physically athletic growing up like how did you get in because you went from a chef to like a fitness instructor so what were you always like that um i remember my first my first race was under sixes in a uh, in in I think it was the community games or something yeah. for the under eights or something and I was too young but I won the race and uh, exactly. yeah the the running and fitness was always in the family okay, and yeah. uh, I just enjoyed that winning feeling you know and then it was kind of just the sports day in school every year it was the fastest in the school you know just, just kind of <laughs> yeah. rubbish <laughs> and of course I was I was I was always good kind of I was never a master of anything but a good in fitness like I was good at I was good at, say, the 100 metres, the 200 metres, the 400 metres, the 800 metres, the 1500 metres, yeah. the five, um, 5,000 metres, all this in school, the high jump, the relay. It was all these just, after, if there's something going, I'm in, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I was never anything, never mastered anything. And um, then going through my life then, I started doing karate then in my teenage years. Mm. And I really, really enjoyed that. And um, then I got into boxing and I trained then in Crumlin Boxing Club under Austin Carruth no way, yeah. back when I was 15. Michael was only out to come back from the Olympics. Yeah. And uh, I was just, oh, boxing, Michael Carruth, just brilliant. And he was in college when I was in Green Hills College in secondary school. Okay. His family lived in Green Hills and they all went to school with my older brother. Yeah. So we would have known of the family um, and I would have known of Michael. And then when he went off to the the Olympics obviously you're like Jay's deadly yeah yeah I know him yeah yeah you know yeah. even though you never met him really you know 
So when he came back there and I just thought boxing is what I wanted to get into. So I get into the boxing and I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, and kind of life just took on from there, really. Sports and fitness and just enjoyed it then. You must have been from, my family's all from around that area, from Walkinstown and all, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I think my dad even went in, maybe he was in the Drim, the boxing club, I'm not sure. But Noel, I think, spent a bit of time. Uh, we were talking about Noel, mm-hmm. your other contestant friend from uh, yeah, Hell Noel Week. Summers, yeah. Noel Summers, yeah. And he was on recently, two or three episodes ago. Um, talking about this Hell Week as well, but he did a, f- a few stints in the Crumlin uh, Boxing Club, and obviously McGregor it was was in and out there as well. Yeah. But um, now why Crack McGall? Because that's um, I wouldn't say it's less known, but you don't see too many clubs of Crav 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 McGall. Crav McGall. Crav McGall. Crav McGall, sorry. Crav McGall yeah, it's um, it's an Israeli martial art, and yeah. it's the number one self defense in the world. Okay. And um, one of my friends actually was training in it at the time, and uh, I remember we were in Germany in. 2000 and I think it was 6 or 2007 and he was training with it or 2008 maybe and he was training and it was just telling me all about it yeah. so of course then there was a lad here teaching so made contact and started training with him and off I went I used to train then in Limerick so I used to get up on my days off um, at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning to drive to Limerick to train for half five, six, and we trained for 7 or 8 hours and then I come back home again Jeez. It was tough going. Yeah, it was tough going, but it's like anything. Anything worth winning is worth putting the sacrifice in for. Yeah, and I know we were talking a little bit about um, you were just before we went on air. You know, because I one of the questions I had for you is that you're if you go on Facebook any morning, you'd see you and the Sun Catchers crew out mm-hmm. first thing in the morning. Yeah, um, and then you'll see you doing a spin class, and then you'll see you doing something else, and it's it's the, every day it seems to be. And sometimes you know it's tough even just roll out of bed for some people. Mm-hmm. You know, so you know how do you you know what's a typical schedule for you and how do you get through it um i have say on a monday tuesday on a typical day before covid <clears throat> we would have classes on a monday tuesday thursday friday morning and saturday morning so we had the sun catchers that do be out in in full force yeah and we get a, a 5k a 10k a 15k or a 20k run so usually it's kind of i'll be out in the morning at half four doing 15k and we'd have to be finished for six because we have spin at a quarter past six right so we get out then so half four be 15k 10k at five and 5k at half five so different people different strengths yeah. getting it up but if you can imagine a world where you're training with people who are your best friends if you can imagine a world where you're, you don't have to go to work. You're getting up every morning to spend time with people who are just quality in your life. You know, if you can imagine a world where you're getting up every morning and you're thinking of the different bubbly personalities hmm. and you're thinking, well, I was messaged or I got a message off two or three people last night saying they're going. So you're looking forward to spending the morning with them. Yeah, yeah. And you're having the crack, yeah. you know. So when I left Sheffin, um, I stopped working. You know, this is just fun for me. So when I get out of bed in the morning, I'm looking forward already to meeting these personalities because I mightn't have seen X or Y three or four days previous. Yeah. So yeah. you know you're going to have the banter. And when you have all the bubbly personalities come together, male and female, you have deadly crack. Yeah. And then you have some people who are really fast mm-hmm. and they could be there, say, once a week. So on a Tuesday or a Thursday, you know, okay, this is the fast train or as the lads call it wave one, wave two or wave three. Right, okay. So you get now and you, like, you could do two laps, that'd be just nice and social. And then you know the third lap, okay, Let's get down to business, and it's just boom, flying yeah. it on, you know. You know, the, as well though, like you're talking about all these classes for different levels. So obviously, people go and they go for a room with you, but then they go home, and then you go with another room for another crowd. Mm-hmm. You know, um, what about burnout? Like, how much is your body able to sustain? In, in yeah. a, you know, this is week in, week out, day yeah. in, day off. Well, it's it's funny because for years, um, going back to working as a chef. So let's take five steps back, say. And when I was working as a chef um, back in the early 2000s, um, we only bought a house. So working as a chef, I was working, say, um, I was working Monday to Friday in a, in a, for a company. And that was, say, seven to half three. So then on, this is when I was in Dublin now, before I moved down. Um, so then I'd gone into working in another restaurant in Dublin City from six to 11. And I'd be working there three or four nights of the week. Yeah. So the body was in a high pressure environment fast everything has to be thinking quick reactive so the body was always moving and it was always used to moving and it was always used to getting doing two jobs the mm-hmm. weekend then you'd be going to playing soccer or you know playing a match or whatever you know having a few points or whatever so then when you move down you get a mortgage you know that continued so i had a full-time job and then a part-time job 
and then I opened my own catering business. So then I was doing parties at the weekend, Friday nights, Saturday nights, right. Sundays. Okay. So it was confirmations, um, 24 all the usual crack, you know, confirmations, communions, all that, um, retirement parties and so on. So I was still had my full-time job as a base. I was still doing my two nights football training at the time with Ballin Abrana, mm. playing GAA. Okay. And then I still had the catering at the weekend. Yeah. So then I went from, okay, well now I want to get the club going. So then of course you had the full-time job, you had the club going two or three nights of the week, and then you still had the part-time job the yeah, weekend. Yeah. So every year, to answer your uh, question specifically, over the years, going back the last 15 or 20 years, my body has been adapting and building every year right. to more. So getting more out of the body, getting more out of the day. You know, it's, it's the, the lazy mind and the lazy thought mm-hmm. is the slow person. Right. The fast mind, the fast, quick thinking. You know me, the motivated person will get loads done. Mm-hmm. And that's the category that I put myself into. Okay. So I don't ever think about burnout because, you know, a little bit of training here and a little bit of training there, a few classes here and a few classes there, that's nothing compared to what I did 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? A bit of, like there's days I come in now and I'd be saying, ah, just, you know, I don't fancy killing myself on 5 or 10K today. Yeah. And you're running with people and you don't even realise you've run 10K because yeah. they're cracking the banter's gone. True. So it's a yeah. so, like my whole thing is, is I suppose is um, hashtag run for fun mm-hmm. so it's not always about the watch it's not always about like the distance is A to B because yeah. it's the loop so some days you could run in 25 minutes some days you could run in 22 minutes some days you're not feeling you could run 28 minutes yeah. but it's just getting the body woken up so burnout will never happen for me okay. because I look after myself I eat well you know what I mean I rest well I drink plenty of water I know the days when I need to listen to my body or I could come in after the run and say I don't feel spin this morning yeah. so I'll just walk around and dictate the class or dictate the boot camp yeah, class yeah. so I pick and choose some days how I feel yeah listen to your body kind oh, 100% of you have to listen to your body yeah and just you're touching on there kind of your your sleep and your, your, your food your diet and all can you give us a bit of an insight to kind of what's a, a typical breakfast or what's a typical you know food for you do you yeah, avoid yeah. certain things or um, I'd be very disciplined Monday to Friday. Yeah. Fiercely disciplined. Um, and again, the way the classes are structured, mm-hmm. I would have the routine, as, as I spoke off earlier, I have the routine that I do every single day. And that routine gives me the opportunity to get the best out of my body. Because if I do a class in the morning at a quarter past six, or if it's spinning or a run at half four in the morning, and I come back to do a spinning at seven o'clock at night, my clients come in they expect the best of me they're not interested that i did 20k this morning yeah. or i'm going to do 20k this, in, in tomorrow morning they've paid their money and they expect high quality training yeah and the same way if i was going to a class i'm not interested in what the trainer's done today or tomorrow or last week or how many medals he has i want the best out of him now mm-hmm. so i eat and i structure my body to make sure that they get the best out of me yeah. so in order for that to happen i have to eat well i have to eat you know proper healthy and again obviously as well from a trainer point of view like i can't come in here looking unfit unhealthy you know be out drinking every weekend you know what i mean you have a social responsibility as well mm-hmm. you know what i mean and of course pride for myself yeah. you know i'm not going to ask someone to go and run a marathon if i can't do it myself yeah yeah you yeah, know i'm not sure. going to train for or tell people okay this is how you train for one of these 24 you know my whole thing is is always leading from the front mm-hmm. so if you're there and you're going knee deep in shit i'll be beside you with the shovel yeah <laughs> <laughs> that it's a good way of putting it i suppose <laughs> that's it <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, like say for I've seen you you before. I've done um, say the Barley Horror Trial, um, things like that. You know, don't even mention. Uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> was, <laughs> that was the worst run I ever had. Really, in my life. boy, tell us a bit about that. It was actually, <laughs> it was. I think there was. Let me see now. I think there was up to fourteen or fifteen of us went down. And I was the only one that didn't finish. No way. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a nightmare every day. Oh, it was a disaster. I was. It's, I still have a nightmare. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> it was the worst thing I've ever been to in my life. Really? And I'll tell you why. I was um, after coming over. I was after being injured coming up to Christmas, and um, I just couldn't get the better of the injury. Okay. And I said to myself, because the previous Christmas we're going into Hell Week, and yeah. I went off to Texas for a week, and I only found out the day before I was going to Texas. That I'd actually, after being accepted as a participant on the Hell Week oh, show, okay. so while everybody was partying in Texas, I was up running every morning, no um, running in the evenings. I, I, in the heat. Yeah, yeah, and everyone was going, oh, have a drink, because I had a bottle of bud, but it was the same bottle carried around all day, mm-hmm. and emptied, filled back up with water. <laughs> you know, but because, oh, you're not drinking, there's something wrong yeah, with you. Yeah, you know, oh, oh, yeah, I know. Oh, grand here, have yeah, a drink, yeah, you know. Yeah. That's, oh, no, I have another bottle here, happy out. You know, but it was only full of water. And um, I was up every morning, and I was doing press-ups, like in the cold water in the pool, you know what I mean, at uh, whatever it was, five o'clock in the morning, yes. when the sun hadn't even come up yet, you know, getting used to adapting the body to, to cold. Yeah. Um, 
press ups, sit ups, burpees, all the, 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 the movement that I thought I would have needed as a kickstart. So this Christmas coming up to it, <clears throat> I decided I was going to take injury. I needed to just give myself a bit of a break for a few weeks. So I kind of took a step back and I put on probably around maybe nine or ten pounds because I just I just ate all around me and I just gave myself this well after Christmas you're going for it now back again so Ballyhora was the second or third week I think it was the third week of January just and gone is it yeah oh really oh, so, okay. so I thought to myself ah sure it'd be grand yeah torn up <laughs> so it was a midnight marathon and it started and I'll never forget it we the first step were at the start line and my foot got caught in the drain and the very first step I went to take clatter straight down on my face. Oh, no way. And it busted yes. my knee, my two hands bleeding, my knee was just in absolute shite. So the first kilometre, the lads just kind of all laughing at me, and I'm like, ah, oh, grand, suck it up, you know. Yeah, no, yeah. no pain, it don't even, exactly, <laughs> yeah. don't even feel it. So got up the first hill anyway, and I was struggling, 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 struggling. So we got up over the mountains anyway, and there was this tree, and it came across, and everybody that came to the tree ducked under it and said, you know, uh, ducked the head or whatever, gave a show. The lad in front of me didn't, oh, laid no. my head down. And we were going across the valley, probably around maybe 10, 12 kilometres, 15 kilometres an hour, whatever speed you were going, I don't know. And I head forced straight into it. And I landed on the lad behind me. And he was, get off me, you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and he tried to get up, and I'm like, what the f oh, just no. happened? And all I could see was yellow streaks coming down. I had it just, and I just kept falling then after that. Fell about seven or eight times. Jeez. And you run through fields with uh, muck up to your knees. And uh, I just had uh, disaster. So no. halfway, got to the halfway point and I said, I'm out. Call it quits. Call it quits. Yeah. It's 60k or something, isn't it? Uh, the, 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 it? 50, let me see now. I actually can't remember because yeah. I didn't complete it, so I don't so know. No, 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 was doing it there a couple of years ago with a, a trainer from uh, Neil from, from Kilkenny. Mm -hmm. and he was like, no, come along for it. But uh, like that, your man Neil had a terrible day of it. And mm. uh, he, uh, now he's, he's well able other days, you know, mm. but just, just whatever happened in the day, he got cramps and they were trying to get out of it and... Noel had to to finish it. He had to go on. You know, your man said just run on, but he said it's horrendous. You know, yeah. it's it's a tough one. When you're running through fields mm. that cows and animals are in, like it's not a track or a yeah. trail. Yeah. And like there's parts of where you're submerged in just completely up to your hips. Like I fell at one stage. I fell in, and I put my hand in. I had two gloves, and I took my hands out. There was no gloves on them. No way. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> so from the elbows up, or just like where's my gloves? I didn't even know I was. I was just it was a nightmare. Um. One other thing we were going to say. So, would you like on a day like that? Say, like, is it porridge? Is it you know typical stuff like that? That are you eating carbs the night before? Or are you okay? Like so, up? the typical breakfast for me in the morning we porridge. Um, I love porridge. Um, so then I go on back to the club and um, before I go running in the morning and have a Nature Valley Oats bar, mm -hmm. and then sometimes then from depending on how hungry I am and have a banana afterwards before spin and boot camp. Okay. So then I'd be straight into the classes home then have my porridge. And come back then, do the classes again, and then I would go on to the gym. Um, and I trained then with Tommy. So Tommy and myself would do strength and conditioning twice a week. So go on to the gym then and come back home then. And I love bacon, beans, scrambled egg, poached eggs. I love that kind of a dynamic mixture. Mm -hmm. So that would be my lunch or a chicken wrap. So I would buy maybe three or four chicks, chicken breasts and put some sort of season on them cook them so the next day when I want them they're cooked in the fridge really just slice good. it up with all the salady stuff there banging on the panini machine and there's your lovely panini um, I could make a homemade soup and have that then as well you know depending some days you're mm -hmm. kind of feeling what you want and other days you aren't yeah, yeah. Um, and then before I go back in the club in the evening I always have a ball of porridge at 5 o'clock every evening okay because again even. yeah and then like that gets the best of me because if I eat too much you know what I mean? I'm coming in and I'm not motivated. My body isn't ready for it because it'll take three or four hours mm -hmm. for that to burn off. Whereas porridge is just quick, straight into the system. You know what I mean? It's light on the belly. It's not too heavy of a meal. And it gives me the endurance that I need to get through the classes at a top level to mm -hmm. give everybody what they, go, what they want. Yeah. And then I come home then and on Monday I wouldn't get out of here till nine because I've got crab maga. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday it'd be eight o'clock and I'd be home then and... Sonia, my wife, then would have the dinner ready. Okay. Um, or whatever we're having, that'd yeah. be ready there. So I'll go in there and have to shake in. Everything's just in, have to shower. She'd throw it on or have it ready for me, plate it up, sit down then and have my dinner down at night. So the key to you is kind of having the prep there and having it ready to go yeah. so that it's no time wasted. Because making a meal can be an hour. And if you don't do it in time, you have two or three hours of the day making your meals or whatever. Yeah. Obviously, it takes a lot of your free time up as well. Of course, yeah. When I go to the shops twice a day, again, as I said to you, everything is <laughs> routine and structure. Yeah. So when I come out here in the morning at quarter to eight, I'd be straight down to rats every morning. You'd see the van outside there. 
and I'd be going in to get the fresh produce for my little daughter for my lunch. Lovely food from that. Oh, it's lovely, yeah. Okay. It's really good. And I'd be buying the stuff then for my lunch. So mm-hmm. if I decide then, right, I'm going to have some bacon and eggs today, you know, get the bacon or get a few bits. If I'm going to get chicken, I'll buy the chicken breast or if we need wraps or whatever. So it'll be a small little. And then before or after lunch, I usually collect a little girl around four o'clock from school. So little, she's 14 now, Jesus, where am I going? <laughs> um, she's as tall as me, she's yeah. a brilliant, Ash, great girl. Um, and we go and do the shopping then, and we do the dinner prep then, and then when I come down to here then, Sonia would get on the dinner for herself and Lauren, and then when I come home then, sometimes they'd wait for me and we'd have dinner together, yeah. other times they wouldn't, they would have the dinner while I'm having my bowl of porridge. And then my dinner then, it'd just be back up then later on. Just you talking about there, you know, your food and stuff like that, I often hear a lot of people talking about, you know, um, protein powders and supplements. Mm. Where, where, what's your opinion on that that side of things? Um, you see, I suppose it depends on what kind of a, an athlete you want to be. Mm-hmm. You know, um, like if you look at, say, the, the rugby players or the bodybuilders, you know, they would take a lot more carbs and protein stuff than someone like myself. Yeah. Like if I would go back, say, three, four years ago, I wasn't as developed muscular as I am now. I'm 15 stone now. Um, back in 2011, 2012, I was only probably around 12 and a half, 13 um, stone. So, um, it, it just depends on, on the type of training you want to be, what you want to be, yeah. you know, what you want to get out of your system. Um, for me, I, I only take a pro recovery, the sponsor pro recovery stuff. Okay. Um, like I only like hitting the gym twice a week. I'm not, I don't want to get massive. Yeah. I just want to have uh, shape. The size I am is, is enough for me. Mm-hmm. So, just a little bit of definition on the muscles. You know, I mean, I'm happy with that. Kind take of the pro. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. So, the pro recovery um, stuff gives me the protein 44 percent protein 44 percent carb and then the rest um it's sponsor pro recovery <coughs> um has the amino acids then and the vitamins and minerals that i need so like if i'm baking say i'd make um the blueberry and banana bread made with the porridge nice, and i yeah. put some satanus and i throw in some six or seven scoops of that so i'd have a slice of that maybe every day mm-hmm. um and i'd bring that then as a treat that if i'm hungry during the class because sometimes you have a bowl of porridge and you have to have a busy day you have to be out in the morning your system just requires that bit more but you don't know until you start hitting it yeah yeah um, and i could be five minutes into the spin class and i'm thinking jeez i'm kind of under pressure here a bit now blood sugar starting to hit low mm-hmm. turn around grab a slice of that banging into you while well, you're going mi- yeah five minutes later then you're rack rocking it and would you advise that and you know we we're talking a little bit about burnout earlier you know if you know there's some nights where you just wake up and you're shattered you know mm-hmm. your heart rate is elevated and you're mm-hmm. just trying to walk around the place you, know, you can feel it and you're you you've committed to doing a run or whatever mm-hmm. like that well then you grab a few snacks to throw in your pocket for for if you need that extra bit of a kick um or is there a time where you say I'm too tired today or you know do you get is there a level of it yeah well I had that last night now the lads are going out for a run now but I like this week say I was doing triple spins all week yeah you know so I knew my body was just going to be like at at an all time low but next week I'll be able to do it because my body will adapt to it okay so you know I don't I don't buy into tiredness burnout you know that's you're not looking after yourself properly. Okay. You know, tiredness and born out is just you want to do everything all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have to have a little bit of self-care with your body. So if I was going running, say, tonight and I was feeling tired, I'd take a nap on the couch for a half an hour. Yeah. Just close my eyes, turn off music, turn off everything. Just put a thing over my eyes and just breathe and relax and just, as you said, re- uh, elevate the heart rate. Just let it come down. Yeah. Rest you the know, brain. Just rest the brain. And I would do that nearly every day. Yeah. I do that probably every day for at least half an hour to 40 minutes. Would you? you know, oh, fun, 100%. Fun, it's funny you said that because um, working at home at the moment and sometimes, you know, before, before we go at home and sometimes you know, wouldn't get the best, but on my break, my hour break, I go upstairs and I lie down for half an hour. And I've only doing this for the last month or two. Mm. And I find it tremendous. Tr- like, y- you go from being... It just changes your day altogether because you know mm. if you're, you're you're groggy. I'm a little bit groggy now today even. But I even said you know I'll go home and I'll take a half hour and I know I'll be at the run or cycle later on. It does tremendous things even if you don't fall asleep. Just resting the eyes and mm-hmm. resting the brain mm-hmm. helps an awful lot, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I find that I that's probably one of my favorite times of the day. Yeah, I call it. Um, I'll be at home now and uh, I call it the briefing time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I must not steal that so <laughs> yeah yeah debrief your time so I'd be just saying I'm going to have a bit of debriefing time here now Sonia for half an hour and she yeah yeah go ahead yeah you know and she's yeah, no problem and to me that's just because my phone obviously because it's a one man one man show so to speak mm. and with messages and correspondence and dialogue with people through Facebook and social media and platforms and stuff it's it's my phone's constantly on silent mm-hmm. but it's always flashing there's always a connection somewhere with something yeah um, so I just put the phone away yeah. set the alarm for 45 minutes yeah. put the phone down lie on the couch and just debrief yeah and it's just you know it's 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 like 
is if you have a bin truck and you're bringing it back to base and you're just emptying all the shit over. Yeah, yeah. And now you're reset and you're flowing. And then the first thing I do when I get up is I'll get a pint of water into me and get outside in the fresh air mm-hmm. for five minutes. Okay. So the pint of water, like in the morning, gets the neural function going again, mm-hmm. cold water. And going out to the fresh air takes you out of the heat of the house and the warmth and the snuggle and it wakes your brain up. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, you come back in there and you're ready yeah, to go. Yeah, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people who are holistic trainers in the last year with this podcast and they're always talking about first thing in the morning try get up try get outside even try and take your socks and shoes off and get into mm. the back garden and just mm. breathe it in you mm. know get out of the constraints of the four walls mm-hmm. and just just get your mind ready for it because they say that's a bit warm up as well you know you get your your, your mentality ready for the, the workout ahead and i guess we're at the going into the the thought the men- mental side of things as well because you know we're talking about fitness it is very good for you know people with depression or people that are unmotivated you know they say you know would you get a lot of people who who find gains would you see that transformation in people like where they might be a bit more sluggish or reserved in the beginning where they come out of themselves oh 100 percent, yeah and a lot of that come down to confidence in themselves mm-hmm. you know when they train they feel better about themselves you know and everything is just a revolving ball a revolving door you know you're feeling so you, you know you're not feeling good you're not feeling confident you're coming into an environment and i'm just from my own club here where you're very very welcome you know what i mean there's help there for you there's something that's going at the end of the phone anytime that you need it mm-hmm. something that's going to give you confidence in yourself something that you can trust you know and when you start to see that the true you that's inside you will start to flourish yeah you know when you see okay James, well I, I i an example there a pt client there started two weeks ago and they done a couple of sessions with me and yesterday was their i think their sixth session with me and what they couldn't do on day one this particular client was going out in my house yesterday and they were just like buzzing for the weekend you know and i'm not going to do anything wrong this weekend i did it all last weekend and i undone the two sessions i'd done yeah. but i had two brilliant sessions this week now and i promise you i'm not going to do it you know and i sent them a message this morning now don't f up today now today <laughs> just a little reminder yeah, to get yeah, in yeah. their head you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah you know and they were going out here last night and thinking to themselves well what i couldn't do two weeks ago i can do today and my mindset's better mm-hmm. you know and that all just comes with themselves coming out of themselves you know and again you know as, as you touched there about ed- exercise and depression and you know like i had clients that have been suffering from serious mental health over the last number of years and that's why i'd be such a f- um, an advocate of carlo mental health association and um, i've done various fundraisers for them that's right, yeah. because like I've, I've felt that way myself before we've all felt that way we've all had family or friends who's been you know touched by you know suicides and so on and so forth and to be able to reach out and, and help people and have the experience to know you know in, in from me like from the training side of it you know okay well just put the arm around the shoulder just listen to them you know mm-hmm. help them understand and let them see that there is light at the end of the tunnel and you can help them get there and all they got to do is just trust you yeah you know and you've done it to 100 200 500 people beforehand it's the same process but it's just getting them to buy into themselves yeah you know and change their own thought pattern yeah yeah almost like a life coaching service as that's well it. isn't it yeah 100 yeah. yeah but it is all tied in isn't it and that's it why is. i thought like the train taught in truth as well because i did find as though it's all interlinked isn't it you know like we've all like you said we've all gone through that depression and things but getting out and it sounds like a silly thing to say to someone why don't you get out and go for a walk or something like that and like, what's that going to do a jog or whatever but like it's even that just that oxygenated blood going to the system getting the endorphins going or whatever you know mm-hmm. and that confidence in yourself or whatever mm-hmm. i have a family member who who um bought a treadmill recently because they didn't want to go outside because mm-hmm. the confidence and it was only a few months ago and they lost a good bit of weight over the last few weeks and signed up for a running club last week and mm-hmm. just seeing that mm-hmm. you know not not only going out by themselves but in the group now as well mm-hmm. you know in dublin which is great you know well energy creates energy mm-hmm. and the more you do the more better you're going to feel and i don't know how many times i've had people come in and say to me jeez i feel great after that workout yeah, yeah and from going back you know to working as a chef you know i've often gone out for a run at 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning you know and a, a guard of car go by you looking at you and you're thinking <laughs> what the hell is this ladder <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean but it didn't matter to me for me it was unwinding getting the stress off my day and getting it off my shoulders mm-hmm. you know because during the day you have a backpack on your shoulder and you're collecting 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 mm-hmm. and you have to learn how to unwind and get that off you yeah you know otherwise you're carrying it Trouble. and it's going to just weigh you down and uh, one of my questions for you was obviously you were contesting in RT's, RT's first ever Hell Week, mm-hmm. um, and I was going to ask you why you took that on, or what what made you like? I can kind of you're answering my question almost now, but maybe you can say what made you apply for that? The challenge. Um, yeah. 
like everybody's in their comfort zone the whole time you know and I like to get outside my comfort zone and grow and when I saw the application form I printed it off and I looked at it and I said to myself this is for me now and I just I knew I just knew that this was right up my alleyway yeah. and to a point where the hairs of my arm were standing up the hairs of my neck were standing up and I hadn't even put pen to paper to put my name on it yet <laughs> but I just I just got a feeling that this is this is where you, you have to be and I'd always listen to my gut and mm-hmm. um, I've met people over years that my gut instinct straight away would tell me you know this person's not for you stay away I've met people over years that I've, you know, this person is one of the nicest people you'll ever meet in your life. I've gone through things in my life where, you know, your gut's telling you, okay, don't step through that door. There's something on the far side of that door that's just telling you that your gut's telling you. And my gut, when I had that application form, was telling me, this is right up your alleyway. This is an opportunity now that you can't miss. Mm -hmm. And I was just so excited about it. Um, And and it was just, to answer your question, just the challenge, Mm -hmm. you know, just to see what you're made of you know because we all talk about the fire and the pit in your tummy and yeah, yeah, how yeah. low or how long or what have you, you got know, in you what have you got in you yeah and i just i wanted to see what i had in myself yeah so i think it's a certain type of person who applies for them kind of things isn't it you special but like because i asked no the same thing like i said was there any point in that where you're like you know sleep deprived after a day or two you're like what am i doing here you know because mm-hmm. noel told me at one stage you are all talking about you just love to be at home having a cup of tea you know at this stage you know was there any moments in that where you're kind of like oh, like i know the, the the bridge jump was particularly difficult i know that stems probably from a past uh, mm-hmm. experience for yeah, yourself, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Was, was there any moments like that that you were kind um, of like Phew. well the first day we got there um and we arrived in and to me, it was like, you know, like, I, I've been through chef, I've been through martial arts, so roaring and shouting in my face doesn't mean that to me, mm-hmm. you know, it's just whatever, you know, so it's just noise, and I just close off from it, you know, so again, when they're on your face, it's just noise, okay, I'd physically trained, and I had a lot of visualisation during my training of, oh, this is going to be tough, this is going to be hard, you're going to be tested, and over the nine weeks I had, that was going through your mind all the time, and yeah. you're building resilience in your mind against whatever they're going to throw at you. So for the first day or two, you know, it didn't really bother me. Um, the week of it, I got loads of sleep. So it's like an event for me. You know, you're building credit of sleep because you know you're going to be deprived. Yeah. Um, the first night I was there now, there was a moment and, and Noel was beside me there and I looked at Noel and I was saying, Jay, said, like, good night, listen, see you in the morning, buddy. And like, morning is, is an hour, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll see you in the morning. Yeah, you know? yeah. And you're just lying there and... You know, I had a lump in my throat thinking of my wife and my child. Where are they at now? What are they thinking of where I am? Yeah. Not of what I'm in. Mm. Because, like, I love my wife so much. I love my little girl so much. And it was all about, I hope they're able to cope and understand that I want to be here. You know, and they know that I'm not in danger. I'm not. Because Sonia would be like, oh, Jesus, here he's gone again. Now he's going to kill himself, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, You know? Um, and then the fourth, the second day, like, the sleep deprived didn't really bother me. You know, the, the physical tasks I trained hard for didn't really bother me. The mental tasks were just, you know, there's an end point to everything. And um, the cold was just something that you can't plan for. Okay. You know, you just, you, like, no matter how tough you are, cold will get you hunger. You can kind of just keep shuffling forward. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? The water jump on the bridge, I was just, I, I nearly drowned as a child. And the water just, you know, and then I was just, I can't do this, I can't do this. And then the cold snapping away at you as well. And then it was minus seven in the wind chill, and the snow was nearly going, like, nearly vertical, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Or, sorry, horizontal. Like, yeah. And you're standing there on the bridge, and you're looking into the water, and the line that Jer, the DS Jer said to me was, because you could see me, like, my whole fingers had just curled right up. And I remember he saying to me, it's warmer down there than it is up here. Yeah. And just that line alone made me jump. Did it? Right, That's it. Think. He could have talked me out jumping as much if he... But again, like, they're watching it the whole time. Mm-hmm. And from the first day I went in there, they're analysing you. And like I said about gut instinct, they're looking at you. And there was a few people there that went very early and mm-hmm. um, that obviously weren't physically prepared, weren't mentally prepared. There was a couple of people who were just, you know, just not my cup of tea, you know, and they weren't a lot of other people's cup of tea because of their personality. Now, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just... Yeah, yeah. Just, just didn't clash. That's it, exactly. And, um, you know, they went very, very early because they weren't mentally prepared and thought they were better or, than anybody else, you know what I mean? So on and so forth. Um, but the DS is looking at you know okay there's something about this lad yeah they're very good you can see them you know obviously we got to see what they were about mm. almost before you did because they yeah. were talking behind the scenes and pulling you yeah. in and, and, and as well as that you see before you go into the program you're doing 
camera work you're doing this kind of stuff okay. so that you're building up a, a profile log so before you they've even met you they've seen maybe an hour of footage of you of talking about yourself so when you're doing this like you're coming across how you're coming across and they'll say well that lad needs taking down a peg or two or no that lad's okay yeah so when i came to the bridge they had a profile of me already that's my point yeah so yeah. as much as they could have said to me right we'll give this lad a chance or they could have said listen this lad's going home we don't want him here yeah and yeah. they gave me every chance yeah because you can see them breaking down certain guys saying look you're fooling yourself you're going to drop out sooner or later and then there's other guys there's kind of saying like you said it's warmer down there so they yeah. obviously were were you know I, I and i remember looking at that and i was watching it as, as it aired and i was like he's not gonna do it is yeah. he like is he gonna do it i don't yeah, know yeah. like you know what's what's gonna happen and we were gonna watch it and the whole country was on edge <laughs> say so yeah, yeah. It, and, it, and it does it looks like what did george hamilton say the nation hold its breath <laughs> yeah, that's where we're off the you know <laughs> But uh, no, it's a great show. I didn't. Um, you obviously, do you were you raging that you didn't make it to the end? Or were you in it? To, were you in it to win it? Or were you enjoying the experience? Um, I wouldn't have gone any further anyway because when I came out, I had two broken ribs oh. and I had a broken nose. Jeez. Um, and when I went to get into the pipe, um, it's like trying to push a car mm. and you can't breathe to push because you can't get the physical endurance. So when I went to get into the pipe, and it was eighteen inches by sixty feet. And when I went to get in, and of course when I bent down, now I didn't know I had broken ribs until I came out, but I knew obviously my nose was broken from the fighting. Um, and when I went to get down and get into the, the tunnel, I went to take a breath, and he's sharp I, stabbing. Not really, no, because I couldn't feel it. Okay. I just couldn't. I couldn't breathe. And then when I came up, I was trying to get a, a big gasp of breath of air, but it was only. It was like when you're out of breath after running the last kilometre as hard as you can. And the more you breathe, the more your heart rate comes down. But imagine the more you breathe, the worse it gets. Yeah. And you just can't. You're caught. And in that moment, I just knew I was going any further. And I think if I'd have made it through the pipe, the next day on the mountain, I would have probably done more damage to myself. Mm-hmm. Because when you're trying to get up Scar Mountain and spend, you know, racing time and all that and carrying heavy weights and barrels and all that shit, like, I would have done probably long-term damage, I'd say, to myself. So again as life comes around and everything you know that was my time to leave i yeah. gave a good account of myself you know done very well i connected with everybody you know i mean i i think i was well held with, with within the group and within the ds's and when i was going home um you know when i when i got up out of the ditch you know jer or ray the the ball he had the lead ds put his hand around me and he said some very very nice words to me and I was just devastated. Tears were coming down my oh, yeah, eye, yeah. and my nose was gushing blood. Jeez. Again, because then you're trying to breathe, and all the, the blood had kind of coagulated in your nose that day. Um, and he was just like, listen. And he was holding my nose, and the blood was all over his hand, and he didn't give a shit. And we got down to the, 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 the back to the dorm, and the other three DSs came out, and there's blood all over my hand. They didn't give a shit. They were just like, listen, you should be so proud of yourself. And said lovely words to me that'll stick with yeah. me for a long time, you know? Okay. Because we're just normal civilians. We're nobody's compared to them. They said that, you know, that the, the cold is probably tougher for ye because the, la- the probably lack of, you know, when they get recruits in, in the early stage normally, but uh, your f- body fat was probably that bit less, you know, yeah. like going into there. They yeah. said, you know, when you stripped you all off the first day, they were kind of like, fuck, you know. Gym bunnies. Yeah. So, like, when you went to, across the river, even, they said that. That would have killed them. Like yeah, that would have yeah. been tough going. Like yeah, much well, tougher than Michael that. number three would have been the fittest out of the group by a country mile. Um, he you know he was like well ahead of everybody mm. fitness wise, but he was one of the first to go because of his body fat. You know yeah. he was too fit. Yeah, I remember. And I think I was thinking to myself, you know, and he, a nicer fella you wouldn't meet. Yeah, and oh, I was thinking so. he, he he could win this, and I could see him going like yourself also did. You know, going to other people saying, you know, you got this, get out of your own head, and he was saying these things, and I was thinking this guy. A good chance of winning this mm, and then mm. should the hypothermia kicked in there's nothing he could mm, do about mm, it you know but it's mm. like the same as yourself where the the body gave out before the mind did almost you know like I mean, that's the way it is you know and then things and you know you're talking about the good feeling and i think truth moving on to that side of things is probably a part of this podcast that makes it a little bit different than fitness podcasts in, in a lot of ways um i'd be a strong believer you know your physical and mental health another thing that's helped me is is my my I suppose I could be quite Christian, especially in the last few years, and I really get great power from that and appreciation for life, and it just kind of removed <coughs> the scales of my eyes a bit and, and um, refocus me on what I'm doing. So um, that's what I say when I say the truth, you know, because I think the physical, physical, mental, but there's something missing, you know, in between, you know, the, the deeper side of things. 
So would you be someone who gets your motivation from, from anything like that? Would you believe in, in God or would you get it from elsewhere? No, I would, yeah, 100%. I say every day I come to the club, even coming up here today, I said a little Hail Mary, just, you know, that goes well for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have um, rosier beads on my bike that when I go cycling. Yeah. I always just give them a little rub and just say, protect me and the group around me. Um, coming down here to spin this week was a new chapter for the club opening back up again. Um, and I grab my little rosary medal and that I have in the van and just a little couple of Hail Marys just to give me the look because yeah. like twice this week we had bad weather and it could have rained and ruined the setup that I have could have ruined me trying to get the club back open again you know and I've had an awful lot of luck over the years to get where I am you know the doors have always just swung open or one door is closed that I thought I wanted to go through mm-hmm. and as I mentioned mm-hmm. earlier on you're redirected on a path and you're yeah. thinking to yourself oh no but then that's the right path but you never knew and then when you get to the, the door of that and the door just opens gently for you and you're looking back and you're thinking just, just, it was all along was logic that yeah. I should have been here and it's funny how these things happen at a certain time as well isn't it like <laughs> like you said at the time you mightn't think you know that's the way you know you're hoping for but in the end it actually seems like it, that's you know because like you're doing that boot book boot class now would you think that um you're doing what you're meant to do in a certain way like that you're kind of fulfilling your your purpose like you know when you say you had that gut feeling mm. when you picked up that paper and i get the same sometimes i'm doing you know this this podcast going on the way to do one mm. and make kind of refocus on me like you would say i would have said my prayer last night or even this morning and say look i hope there's no technical difficulties i hope me and paul both really enjoy the chat and mm. and you know it's funny you know say like i wouldn't say it if it didn't work either you know over the years though it's proven to me have you always been someone who's who's uh, religious or is it more of a renewing over the last few years i wouldn't say it was anything renewing them um, i remember years ago even just thinking of it now like when i was going back I, I was living with my nanny for a little while back when i was 16 um and when i used to get off the bus we had to go through this place called the valley and it was full of drunks and druggies and all that and of course i was super fast like i was you know running for Ireland at the time nearly, you know, and uh, I remember before I got to the valley, I'd get off the bus and say a Hail Mary, and I would go as fast as I could through it, really? when I got on the far side, I'd say, thank you Lord for getting me through that, yeah. <laughs> do you know, yeah. um, no, I'd always be, I'd always be, and it's not something I'd ever been renewed with, sometimes I might have forgotten about it, mm-hmm. um, but when the point of where you're nervous, or the point of fear is kicking in, or a point of where I feel my back is against the wall here now and I need that little something on the shoulder just to give you that little punch Oops. through, you know. Um, and it could be all in your head, it might all be. But for me, you know, it's just, I know when I, it's funny because <laughs> um, I, I've often kind of questioned things like as in, um, you know, am I meant to be here? Am I meant to be in the right place at the right time? You know what I mean? And I'd always just say like, you, like why am I worrying about something that I know you're going to have me back in. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm thinking of three steps ahead and I hope this goes right because if that goes right, like the crystal maze, that door will open and if that goes right, that door will open. And my mind, because my mind is so active, like there's no times I could, I might not even sleep at night time because my mind is just going 100 mile an hour. And I'm always kind of thinking, not worried I suppose, it would probably be the wrong answer, but kind of overactive of, okay, I can do this, I can do that, I can do that, I can do this. But then when I get there, I'm thinking to myself, well, why did you waste that time spending that time thinking or overthinking or analysing more, I suppose, when you always knew that he was going to have your back anyway. Yeah. You know, you're like, I, I look, I follow the rules of life. Whatever you give out, you're going to get back. You know what I mean? I'd like to think I'm a good person. I'd never do anything wrong on anybody. You know, I'll always extend my hand to somebody to welcome them. And the first part of call of any connection is a smile. You know, and that gives warmth and friendliness and welcome. Um, and I pride myself on that in the club, no matter who you are, what you are. You know, once you give me respect, you get it twice back. If you be my friend, I'll do that for you. But that's not buying a friend. If you show me friendship, I'll give you friendship back. But I'll always have your back. Yeah. You know, and I feel that the man upstairs, as I call him, um, so does the same back. for everybody. And if you're a good person, you know, I believe that, you know, good things will happen to you. Mm-hmm. If you're a bad person, now that's not saying that a lot of good people, bad things don't happen through the, the life, but, you know, if you learn and listen, and, you know, life is a learning curve, and if you pick up the lessons mm-hmm. and the signposts that are showing you to go in the right direction all the time, and I try, I like to think that I've learned a lot over the last number of years, but again, as I said, like, he always has me back, so. Yeah, yeah, I think that, you know, I had a, a, just a renewing of faith probably three or four years ago now, and I think um, I would have been 
a little bit on the depression side of things before it happened and I kind of called out in you know I had one of those moments where it, things start changing rapidly once I started you know calling on, on God you know and um, I think it's one of the reasons why I'm doing this something I like doing you know <laughs> I think you know maybe I was a bit too materialistic and even you know my partner would say to me you know geez it's funny like a few years ago you know you were focused on this and you know you were I was all about work and I didn't really care about being at home either and you know I remember you know just over a year ago I was going back and forth to work and I said you know I can feel you know when you when you say your prayers you, you, it's it's not bouncing off the walls I think everyone realizes that something's heard it you know it's going somewhere and I was back and forth driving to work and I had plenty of time to think my three hour commute every day and I was thinking um, I know there's something you're wanting me to do or, uh, and I don't know what it is, you know. So one day, it just took that few minutes to sit outside with a pen and paper and write down, like, this is what, I, this is what I'll do. And the people I've met, and then, you know, on this podcast, just talking to them, people who are, are following what they're doing, like yourself, like, talking about that, you know, inspires even me to, you know, keep pushing through a life. I've learned so many things from, from having the guests on and, and mm-hmm. things like that. And saying my few prayers, and I feel it, you know. And, and I've had people on who are, who are atheists, and, and there's people who've said... I'm, I'm actually atheist. I want to come on and challenge you on, on the thing. And I said, oh, okay, but I don't, we don't, we shouldn't fall out about it. You know, like <laughs> have a discussion for people. Opinions. Whatever. Yeah, opinions. Yeah, absolutely. But I do, I remember I was on Sugarloaf Mountain uh, in January and we're doing a 10K run. I have a friend who's in the army who was on this and he's always trying to you know, sign me up for this and that. And I wasn't ready for it. And we'd done a few trail runs and I was up on the back trying to get over the crest of the hill. And uh, like many others, we're all kind of, we were all after hitting that wall and, uh, I was kind of had me cross and was like, you know, help me out here, you know. And I remember, it's funny in my own head, I was thinking, you know, well, do you want his result or do you want your own result, you know, <laughs> in that way. But a lot of time I do call on help in that way. Yeah. But um, I do think it's a big part because I think that's helped my mentality, you know. I think it does bring people out of their shell a bit and um, it gives appreciation for life a bit more. Mm. But it's good in, in that well, the way. mind is, is, is a, like, it's, it's a marvellous thing, you know, and... I suppose we we only activate what we want. Mm. We're only as motivated as our goal. Yeah. Um. Like people would always ask me, like, how do you do what you do, or how are you always so positive, or you know, how are you so, how have you got so much energy? Like, it's I clear the shit out of my life. You know, I don't tolerate stress. I don't tolerate nonsense. I don't get involved in nonsense. I don't tolerate negative people. You know, I get up in the morning. My my thought process is positivity all the time. You know, no, I'm not walking around like a happy clown the whole time. But it's, it's, I don't put barriers up to stop me doing things. I knock them down to help me go forward as a person. Mm-hmm. You know, and every year I like to learn something. I like to grow. I like to do something different. Um, and, you know, everybody has a destiny. And it's about you trying to pick up or figure out what your destiny yeah, is. Absolutely agree. You, you yeah. were always meant to be here. Yeah. You just probably didn't know. You know, and you listened and you challenged. Yeah, I think that's the part. It's the listening part as well, isn't it? You know, it's it's kind of saying, that, you know, we're taking the time to listen. I think we get so busy with work sometimes and, and stress, like you said, that a lot of us are going through, I was doing, I was just falling through my days, tired, in a haze, you know, and I wasn't taking a step back to realise. And, and I do agree. I think that we're, you know, that you're doing what you're meant to be doing. And I'm on, I think I'm on the journey to be doing what I'm meant to be doing. I think this is part of it. I think mm-hmm. we both should be here. And we, you know, I think that as well, by us talking, even if you hit three or four people who listen and take something from it, I think that's the job done at the end mm-hmm. of the day, isn't mm-hmm. it? You know? Well, I think, um, like, we're all tied to deadlines. And I think this COVID has realized, you know, maybe made people realize that there's more to, like you said there, materials. Like, what? Why have a brand new car outside? That you're paying three, four, five, six hundred quid a month for to sit in the car park. Yeah. That you're only driving for an hour a day, maybe or two hours a day. What's the point? I yeah. have a, a van outside that's 2007. And I'll keep that for, that's what, 13, 14 years old now. And, I, and there's only 100,000 kilometers in it. But that'll still be gone in 10 years' time. Yeah, yeah. And I'll still keep it. Yeah. You know, because I don't need to keep up with the Joneses to have a van. Yeah. You know, yeah. just to look good. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I. I like I said beforehand, I fell into that trap a little bit where I was like, I got the car, and the car I got then is the same car I have now. And I said, now I'll, I'll drive the wheels fall off. And now it's mm. 2010, now it's old, it has its marks, and I don't care. Mm. It's a car, it's a piece of metal. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? What I care about is, you know, making the right moves to, you know, have a good family life, mm. be there more. Um, and if, you know, hopefully to do this, do things I like doing, and help people along the way if I can. Mm. And, and that's, you know, that's where I'm going, you know, that's yeah. where. 
where we should be going i think you know yeah. focusing and taking a step back i think our hours and i, and I think you're right with the COVID 19 everyone has been able to have that bit more of a chance to have that family life and remember you know our whole lives went on pause there mm. i know obviously it's very negative what well, happened it, well the thing is though my life didn't go on pause because my life has always been the way it is yeah you know i still got up in the morning I still went running. Yeah. I still came home and had my breakfast. Mm-hmm. I still did the same routine. I get up then and I still did boot camp in the morning five days a week. The only difference for me is I had four nights off. Yeah. And we had dinner. Instead of three nights a week, we had dinner together as a family. Seven nights a week. Mm-hmm. And we still went out like walking in the afternoon. We still, like Lauren, Sonia and I, we still went out for our cycles. We still did things together as a family that we always do. So my class structure is all based around my family. You know, family is what everything's all about, you know, and if you don't have the backing, well, I've got super backing from my family and my extended family, you know, and they're brilliant supporters of what I want to do, you know, yeah. and they see the good of what we, the club has achieved over the last number of years, um, and they're on board with that, you know, and, like, the material things don't matter, mm-hmm. you know, the bullshit that a lot of people are going around talking, just nonsense, just to be heard, you yeah. know, we talked about listening. Mm-hmm. It's the most powerful thing you can do is to actually just close your mouth and listen to what people are saying too many people like i'm loud but i'm loud because it's the class i'm on facebook because it's i'm trying to connect with people mm-hmm. but you know most of the time i'm actually fairly quiet yeah you know like i could sit at home and i just happy to be just sitting at home like for me everything is just the simple things in life yeah you yeah. know last night even just sitting there on the couch there sonia and i and uh, just holding hands watching i don't even know what we were watching mm-hmm. um oh yeah we started watching a new uh, new thing on um suits on netflix oh yeah megan markle's in it we watched the first episode of that last Did you the free for it yeah it's out uh, a while it's actually quite good isn't yeah, it yeah i've only watched about 40 minutes of it now yeah yeah no it was but it looks good. good yeah yeah it is but good for me the simple things yeah was just sitting there holding hands yeah and just watching something together yeah. I, I agree and, and I listen to her daughter laughing in the, in the other room with yeah her it's, it's, it is things like that isn't it because then they, like i've a six-year-old and he would be growing up soon and he asked me to play with him the whole time and I, I was going through a few years where I was too tired to, and I, I was trying to upscale to get up the ladder in my job. So I was going to work, and then I was going straight to college in the evenings. And now it's grand; it has got me to where it was, and things have arisen in certain. But now I have time; I make time to you know go out on the trampoline with him, and get out on the bike with him, and you know, and just remember he's a kid, and he won't always be a kid, mm-hmm. and he wants to play with you now, but then he'll be a teenager, and he might want it, you know. Yeah, so yeah. I just just soaking it all in mm. and, and living in the moment and not mm. being foolish about it i mm. think um i love i love looking back um at memories there on facebook and one came up last night mm. and there's a picture of um lauren and i that is a, i'll actually show you here now and it's a picture of lauren and i at a match there um and it was caught actually on rte there it is there i threw it up on social media and it was a picture of us in the aviva stadium <laughs> very good isn't that brilliant that's a great it? one actually stick it there you know, hopefully you won't see um and it was captured at the aviva stadium there was fifty thousand people in, in the stadium it's an rt that's a frame one it is <laughs> and they put it up on their website of this is how much it means to our supporters. No way, yeah. yeah. Very good. And it was a whole thing. It was in the paper as well. It was in the Herald. Yes, and really. that came up in memories last night. Yeah. And I just looking back because when Lauren and we were going to the matches now um, a couple of years ago, I didn't renew my season ticket this year. But I'd take Lauren off for a half day and we'd go up and we'd park in, in, in Dublin, in Tala. Because my mate would sit beside us. He had season tickets as well. There was a group of us. So I'd park my car at his house and Lauren and I would get the Lewis into town. And we do a bit of shopping and then go to the Shelburne Hotel and have tea. Yeah, yeah. You know what that's I mean? That's great, though. It's a great little routine, isn't yeah, it, Larry? It is, yeah. Little, what would you call it? I suppose that's a nice little day out. Yeah, day out. Day out, yeah. I'm always glad when I see you with a Dublin jersey also because... Um, Never I, forget your roots. No, <laughs> you know, and, you know I, I often... You know, sometimes when the matches are on stupid channels, I go down to the Dinry or whatever with my, my jersey on and watch the match and uh, I always feel like the outsider because there's not a lot of Dublin jerseys going around Carlo but uh, then I see your post on Facebook like, ah, I'm not the only one here yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> too many them. people and this is one thing that if anybody's listening to this too many people care what other people think mm-hmm. I don't Yeah, you know I know what I do is good and what I do with good honest and trust you know in myself and I don't hurt anybody don't care what people think mm-hmm. you know and too many people are out to to worry about what others think, mm-hmm. what the Joneses think down the road. Don't care. You know, never have, never will. Yeah. You know, I know what I do is right. Mm-hmm. I want to do it with integrity and honesty. Don't care. Yeah. So if I went to go in with, a, with a pink jersey with fecking polka dots on it, 
I don't care once I'm happy yeah that's all that matters yeah absolutely I think you know when it's focusing on the real issues I have to ask you where did boom originated from because you hear boom maybe yeah. <laughs> Because it's your catchphrase now, isn't yeah. it? You know? It's um, any time that you hear the word boom, it's on. It's, on, <laughs> it's, it's I'm the first person you think of. Yeah. Um, a person said it to me one day, come on, Paul Ward, boom. And this is going back uh, years ago. Mm. And I think I was in Australia, maybe, and he said it to me. And this back in 2000. I remember hearing that word and thinking, yeah. And then it just came somewhere. Someone said it somewhere on a football channel, maybe in the mid to mid thousands, two thousands, and then around two thousand eleven, someone said something to me one day, and I was in a fit of excitement, and I went boom, and they were like, "Be the Lord Jesus," <laughs> and I think it was caught on camera. Right. And looking back in that exhilaration, that I was looking for a word to, to express how I felt, yeah, yeah, and the only word that came out in that moment of just pure fatigue and energy was just boom, because there was nothing else in my mind, yeah, and. Uh, I think then another time then it kind of came out again just a fit of just like just like yeah boom we're there you just know? gathered momentum then yeah 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 and it just took off then yeah there. yeah because it is the home of the boom isn't it it, it really is the home <laughs> of the boom yeah <laughs> well, look do you have anything I know everything's been cancelled this year and you had other things coming up do you have anything big coming up this year you're still hoping um, for uh, let me see now what's coming up now we have there's a couple of big things coming up, um, but I don't think we'll be ready for this. The carry way that the lads are doing in September, October, I think. That's 200k run. Um, now, I did 70k there just before lockdown. I've seen and that, yeah. I had two knee operations on my left knee before. And after about 40, 35, 40k now, my knee started to give out a bit. So I don't think that my body will last for that. Now, okay. there's a difference between fantasy and reality. And the fantasy of wanting to do it and the reality of actually doing it because your body mechanics just won't work. Yeah. Um, so we have the marathon coming up now in October which yeah. we do every year so we'll cycle 80k run the marathon cycle back and that's a walk in the park because it's not as much stress on my knee even though it's cycling like it's cycling as grand because I do it here all the time you know mm-hmm. so that's in October so that'll be a bit of crack and whatever comes up then in between that because a lot of places might say right we'll we reschedule something and we'll throw it on November, December whatever Yeah. Um, there's the race in Donegal which we've previously done in 2017 that's in April next year okay. so we um, might give that a lash and then Quest we did the 24 hour and the 12 hour Quest race there in August last year so on the one day they have from Sneem in Kerry do a 12 hour event including uh, running up and down Karen Tool Ireland's highest mountain yeah. and then I'd like to give the 12 hour shot on that next year okay so I think but, but again it's a team like we we'd like I do is I throw it out there and I go to five or six people who I reckon to be up for the challenge and up for a bit of madness and a bit of crack and you know it's it's always disappointing because the training part is the best part of it mm. the days out the event is deadly but when the event is over you have that disappointment of like what are you doing now yeah yeah you know they always say it has to be the getting there not the not there or the going not the getting there yeah the journey not the challenge yeah yeah, yeah. the journey is brilliant because we have some incredible people here yeah um like there was three of the ladies that were in the top 10 there last year now it's not about who's in the top 10 or who's not mm. but these ladies have never done these type of events before yeah. or have on a smaller scale um, like there's 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 ladies and females in the clubs that could be well into their you know I'm 42 a generation above or two generations above. Mm-hmm. We have one lady there last year did her first. Um, she won't mind me mentioning her name, Nolene, and she did her first Dublin City Marathon at 66. Wow! Yeah. You know, and she came to me January of, of last year and said to me, "What do you reckon, Paul?" And I said, "Sure, why not?" So just take one step at a time and put your training in and enjoy the training. Don't yeah. be looking at it as a toll. Mm-hmm. That like because too many people spend six months training for a marathon and then the last six weeks are just a nightmare. Mm-hmm. You know you have to go and enjoy the journey. You have to, as I said there, the journey is the best part for me. The yeah. end point is the event, and you're like, it's over now. Yeah. I love the journey. Yeah. And we have some incredible people here that that journey is right. Right. What's next? What are we going to do next? Right. Let's go and do this. Right. That's a bit of crack. So let's go and do this now and we'll have a bit of crack doing that, you know? It's a great thing to be invested in, isn't it? Like, it's just your health and your well-being. And I think, you know, like, to have that excitement and have them things to do, like, there's nothing better, really, there's is there? Like, better. Like, like, years ago, I remember, like, and I wasn't feeling good, you know what I mean? I remember talking to a lady. I met her one day and she was doing therapy with people. And uh, she just says to me, James, you look a bit stressed. And I'm just, you know, she says, you need to get out into nature more. And that flipping comment was enough for me to say, do you know what, you're probably right. 
and uh, started getting out into nature a bit more and it was just such a difference yeah you know and myself and Dermot now Dermot and Brian now we go run along the barrow a lot yeah yeah um, and we were only running there last week from Bally something there just in the edge of Boris where the bridges are right down into Greg Namana yeah and that was 20k 10 down and that was probably in the top 3 runs I've ever had of the nicest runs I've ever really? had I've seen your, your, your clip on it actually yeah unbelievable yeah. Peter Lord it and like you stunning. said you, I see you going out too I, I found it as well you know I'd only been running about a year but mm. running on the roads it's so much different when my friend said to me Let's try a few trail runs mm. you don't need the headphones or you know you just get in, out there and it's it's amazing the difference isn't it just getting yeah. you know and we've, we're lucky we've some plenty of great places Castlecombe or Muller Creel and mm. Jenkinstown mm. beautiful woods mm. with trails on them you know you can just breathe in pure fresh air mm. you know, and it's lovely there in the mornings you know because there's no flies there's no midgets the mm. sun is just cracking through the trees yeah the trees and the the, the forest holds that warmth mm-hmm. or you might have a couple of cold spots and just running through there and you can hear the birds singing and the magic that's in the air like yeah. and you can feel even though it could be on your own or you could be with somebody usually there'll be a couple of us are just even Dermot and I and you just feel the magic yeah and the power of nature and the power of that's just being amazing. alive you know it's like an injection of just pure just fantasticness I, I can't even find a word for it you yeah know? yeah no i know the feeling what you're talking about it's, it, it really is amazing you know if you said to me two years ago like yeah i suppose it'd be all right but i get it like i get mm. it like i get it now you know the day i met you out there in mulla creelan when i ran underneath the drone <laughs> did you cop the drone actually uh, no no you did not. no i was, I was you know? running for yeah, you're in the zone yeah right? yeah um and I, I didn't even see anything it's just <laughs> focus yeah. um but on my first lap my warm-up lap the laughter that was cracking through the air from the kids and everything I haven't heard that before, before the lockdown. I haven't heard that before, mm-hmm. you know. And sometimes before and after that run there, just to hear kids laughter through the air in Mullet Creelan, mm-hmm. something I haven't heard in a long, long time. Yeah, you know, yeah. connections, family, mothers, fathers, kids, not in a rush, no stress, mm-hmm. just being together, connecting, you know, positive, you know. Yeah, we went out there a week, after, a week after. Um, we've, like I said, four week old, and. Um, I was out there just shortly after we were talking the day after I think yeah. and we went there with the buggy right up to the top and had a picnic there just chill out phones off you know and just really enjoying it you know mm. the four of us and um, it's just like spots that aren't that far away just to make that little bit of time mm. we get too cocoon- cocooned like we were saying into our front rooms and mm. stuck on watching that black box which is great sometimes to unwind but too much of it you know some days in lockdown we shame to say I didn't get outside mm. you know we, we sure, there's no harm yeah there's yeah. no harm in that the, mm. the biggest the biggest problem we have is our, is our phones and our pads mm-hmm. you know it's just depressing everybody yeah you know like I stopped watching the news there and we only started watching it back this week actually to see about Trump because he's a different story altogether yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but just I'm just dying for the day to see when he's gone you know what I mean yeah, yeah. Um, but I only started watching the news again um, on, on any evening the only thing I do is I go on to Emer's page Emer and on to see what the, the day's tally is of you know the unfortunate people who are after passing away or but other than that you know I post a lot on, on social media yeah. but I don't yeah. actually scroll through it yeah. I'm on Instagram and I post I don't think I've scrolled in Instagram I'd say in more than probably three or four years yeah yeah no interest mm-hmm. facebook i might go down maybe for 10 or 15 seconds but i've no interest it's just pure depressing yeah and rubbish yeah and it, it really does get to your head doesn't it you know if you, you allow it if you allow it like that and you if you have the notifications on there's all and it, you know the phone always goes off yeah. you know and there's always something to look on it and you get trapped in that and we often say we don't want to be the parents that are you know because mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. he's you come on side yeah just going to post this or whatever like that and there's a big balance there that it's fine for for certain things like you said posting and stuff like that and people get great motivation from mm. it and i try to do the same myself but well i try and spread positivity mm. so i put a picture up myself and my daughter or we're out for cycling encouraging people to get out and do something yeah yeah you know like again because of the the, the club that i have mm. i don't look at it as a social responsibility i look at it this is what life can be about yeah. if you just make the right decisions mm-hmm. you know there's nothing stopping i take a selfie in the morning or a video it's a positive message get out there get up yeah we're out here this morning getting a run you can get out and uh, do it too. It, you know it works for me even because like oftentimes i got up and you know like well, I get out for a run today where's my gear and then i look and then there's you doing your 10 or 15k that morning or bright and early and it has genuinely helped me to get out and do a 10k that day mm. you know? and that's the only reason why i post in the mornings mm-hmm. you know and it works it does <laughs> yeah. but when you get up in the morning and you're like most people sitting in their bed or sitting on the toilet mm-hmm. and they're flicking away there i'll always come up on your post yeah because the positivity will attract and like and attraction the law of attraction mm-hmm. will always attract me onto face line onto the people the right people yeah and looking at that 
and they're thinking excuse me if they're thinking jeez that lad can do it mm-hmm. you know I can do it too yeah that's great before you go do you have any like messages like that that you'd have if someone was coming across this talk today who is stuck in their room or on the couch depressed yeah. or you know trying to get the motivation to get out there do you have mm-hmm. any part message for them if you want help I can help you you know what I mean I'm the water and you're the horse I can bring you to me and I can help you but if you want to help yourself and you want change I can help you in any way shape or form I have the experience I have the contacts that I can be the road sign to point you in the right direction I can't solve everybody's problems but I can point you in the direction of somebody who can help you and um, if you, if you want to lose weight tone up fitness you know what I, mean? I don't need to sell myself you know and mm-hmm. um, I'm there to help and my hand will always be extended to help anybody that needs help if you come to me with, it, with genuine that you genuinely want to change there's no, there's no journey like my the client there who was 29 stone at one stage and he was down to 16 and a half then wow. at one stage you know because he had had enough of his life he had enough of how he how he was he wanted to change and become a different person and that was easy though and he, t- he sat down and he poured his heart out to me and we had a chat and he says to me at the end of it well what do you think can you help me yeah easy because you want it yeah you know, and once you want it, so my message is, if you want change, I can help you. Mm-hmm. But if you're only thinking about change or you're not really sure, you're not ready. Yeah. But if you want change, I'm there, and that's the easy part. Mm-hmm. The hard part is convincing yourself that you want it. Yeah. You know, but once you put your hand out in front of me and say you want to help, I'm there and I'll go beyond. Yeah, and knowing, knowing that you're worth the change as well, isn't it? Like a lot of people like think, oh, sure, like it's... You know, I'd never be able to do that. I thought that myself. I'd never be able to run. I'm always getting injuries and that. Like, but there's always anyone can do it, can't they? Really, like you know, like you said, once you know you're worth working on. Yeah. Well, there's mountains. Everybody, it's not going to be easy, but it's it's always everything is a mountain. Mm -hmm. You know, and how big your mountain is, how big your iceberg is, depends on you know how one fits you or how I was shape here. But the view from the top of the mountain is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. But I've worked hard in my training time to get where I am. You know what I mean? And nothing has ever been easy. And there's going to be plenty more obstacles down the line that's going to challenge, you know, myself personally, physically, mentally. You know, if I broke my leg tomorrow, you know, that's a big challenge to come back from that. If I fell down the stairs and broke my two arms, it'll be a big challenge to come back from that. But there's no challenge that anybody can rise to once they want it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Nothing at all. Just have to, you know keep putting one step in front of the other like as I said about Noli and doing the marathon just put one step in front of the other and just keep taking one day at a time one minute at a time yeah. you know and just breathing relaxing it, everything is, is a marathon it's not a sprint everybody wants to be there yesterday yeah. instead of realising that this journey is going to take a little bit of time yeah. we'll get there you know just have to keep taking small steps and every like, single like day said, enjoy the journey as enjoy well enjoy the journey yeah. yeah that's great listen Paul Thanks very much for coming on. Thank you for time because I know we have taken up a lot of your time and no, you're no, busy. You're oh, a busy man. Pleasure. Pleasure. But I will put um, Paul's links to to your um, boot camp and all mm. all your social media links below and the uh, info and hopefully mm. have this chat uh, online the next few days. And, yeah, uh, I'll let cool. you know. Well, we do online boot camp classes that people can join the group. Yeah, um, and people from all over the world that are doing it. Believe yeah. it or not, at the moment, yeah, oh. Spain, America, Australia, and England. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, because when, when you're on the group, you see. The private group you can do the workout so i'm connecting every day whether it's ireland time australia time english time spanish time doesn't make a difference the, the workout you can join in at your time of the day according to where we are in the world okay if you miss it it's there already and you can just catch up later on right, there's yeah. people who are a day behind now and they because their days are different so they're doing friday's workout this morning or this afternoon or this evening so they're still getting the five workouts in. So all you gotta do is just tell me you want to be in, and we'll sort it out. It's amazing, isn't it? What they can do, like that connection. Like that's one of the positive things of the the social media is that mm. throughout the whole world, if anyone wants to click onto it, like yeah. and and people will, you know, people listen to this from from like I said, uh, the forty over forty countries. I yeah. think you know, I was surprised when I seen them light up. Said, who's listening in Indonesia? You know what I mean? Mm. But like, there you go. Like they. They could be new poly boot camp members. <laughs> they could be. Well, yeah. you see, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. You know, in connection and everything used in the right way is a powerful tool. Yeah. Um, on the group, we have recipes every day. I put up three or four posts every single day of at least two recipes every single day that are really good, nutritious, healthy food. Yeah. Um, the videos are there and they're accumulating. So now in there's 15 videos there now. There would be 15, 7, 14, 21. There'd be 42 recipes there now. Um, there would be... 42 84 posts of 
po- you know positive things every morning you can't climb the ladder of success with your hands in your pockets today is going to be your day mm-hmm. let's smash this positivity is everywhere just look at the see the sign good stuff every day that's gonna and i post them in the time of day that i know that when you get up in the morning you your see. first part of call is your phone yeah your first part of call is you got notifications where are they from you click on it. paul's after posting what's he posting bang that's after connecting with my mind something to think about now i'm going away and i'm going to think to myself that could shape my day yeah one positive thought in the morning sets you up for the day absolutely fair play paul much appreciate thank you very much pleasure i can't shake a hand for the covid so you can't shake my hand there's, yeah. a, there's a lesson for the camera eh? boom <laughs> yeah but listen thanks very much paul and again thanks very much we'll get this up for the next few yeah. days my pleasure fair play thank you so thank much you. Someone say round two tomorrow? Smoke it!